So I just got an email from somebody asking about some more advanced functions in the fitting um, of experimental data to simulated data um, in GPVDM and how one can, can sort of use some of the more advanced fitting features. So I thought I'd just answer this in a little video. So I've got this fitting example up by going File, New Simulation, clicking on this fitting example. The bottom word's missing there, but it doesn't matter. Um, and this is effectively a nice example of how to fit um, the simulation to experimental data. If you click on Home and then Fit to Experimental Data, you get this window up. And so this is the um, experimental data that I've imported already. So it's just a light JV curve in cur here's some current density and here's some volts. Um, and then this window here is the effective difference between the is effective a picture of the error function. So if we click, um, to, you generate this by clicking one iteration. And what this one iteration button does is it effectively runs the fitting algorithm just once, just one single step. It doesn't try to actually change parameters. It just it just runs the simulation, compares the experimental data, and compares compares how far out they are. If you actually want to run a fit, you click run fit. But this is just effective. This button here effectively generates this graph. And you can see here again we've got something we've got the experimental data in red, and we've got the uh, simulated uh, data in blue. Now. This is called the error function. Now I just want to explain what the error function is. So um, here we've got our, um, let me just draw. So here we've got the, um, I'll just, I'll make this a dark JV curve just to make it all positive numbers. Here we've got a dark JV curve, something looks like that. And we'll call this experimental, so this is experimental one. And here we've got a simulated dark JV curve, so it's gonna make it look a bit, a bit off, okay? So it's not quite right yet. Now the game of the fitting is effectively to make this curve equal to the black curve there. So um, mathematically, effectively, we want to make effectively this area here um, disappear. So I'll mark this in green. In fact, we want to make this area here whoops, equal, equal to zero. And when that happens, this blue curve will sit on top of this black curve. So what we can effectively do is we can, um, so I guess mathematically, we can write this curve here we can say this is um, um, this is volts we'll say this is volts and this is uh, current we can make this uh, we can make this curve um, so we'll describe this curve we'll say this is uh, j e x p as a function of voltage and we'll say this is j sim as a function of voltage now what we what we want to do effectively is to make um, j sim voltage minus j exponential exp voltage um, integrated between here and say so here we'll call this one volt between one volt dv equal to zero so that's the aim that's that's that that this this that's effectively the area of this we want to minimize effectively this area to zero which is this explained mathematically um, so this function here we call effectively an error function. This is how much error um, there is uh, in, uh, in, in between the simulation experiment. <clears throat> now um, we might want to add lots of uh, error functions. So for example we'll also be fitting at the same time, a, so I'll just go down and add a new page. At the same time we might also be fitting a light JV curve, so here's a, here's a light JV curve experiment and simulation. Now clearly these will, be, these will be on different scales. So this will be, I don't know, this might be up here, I don't know, this might be say a thousand, a thousand amps per meter to the minus two or something like that. Maybe that's uh, minus 200 um, amps per meter to the minus two. And we might, we might also be um, uh, fitting some uh, um, I don't know, we might also want to fit some, some other types of data to this as well, like some impedance or something like that. But the point I'm making is that this, um, the scales here are going to be very, very different um, numbers. So, so the, the maximum point here is going to be very, very different to the maximum point here. And if, for example, as well, I don't know, we might want to um, fit some transient photocurrent data. So here's some transient photocurrent data. This will be time on a log scale. A log scale. Um, this this would be a very very different type of, of experimental data um, to this. So if we're doing lots of fitting at the same time together, what we'd have is we'd have a total error function. So f of um, 
we'll just call it f. And it would be made up of the error function of the light JV and the error function of the dark. The my tower hunter dark JV and maybe plus the error function of the transit photovoltaic curves. Um, now these are all going to be on very very different scales. So for example, you know this is between a thousand miles and two hundred. This might be between zero and I don't know three hundred or something. And this I, I don't know how, I can't I can't remember what what the maximum of that would be. But to write a function like this, where effectively all these um, different curves, so I've maximised, where, where all these different curves effectively contribute to the error, we need to normalise all of these data sets. So what we generally do is we normalise the maximum value to 1.0, we normalise the minimum value to 0.0, to 0, .0. and again here what we'd, what we'd probably do is we'd shift this up here, so I'll just draw this in green, so that this, no, I'll draw it in black, so this, this would be renormalised, as this would be 0, and this maximum point would be 1, and the same with the simulated data. So effectively we normalise everything on a scale between 0 and 1, and the same with any transient data or anything like that, you normalise it between 1 and 0. And this means that when you calculate this error function, um, all these parameters here, whoops, all these parameters here um, will, equ will contribute equally to the total error function. And the error, well, the game is to basically make this total error function um, tend to 0, and then all your experimental data will fit. So that's the game. So why am I telling you this? Well, if you look back here, um, this is effectively normalised. Um, <clears throat> between, it's not actually gone to, um, so we, 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 we can play with this, so for example there's various options in the configure window, so for example you can um, set the first point to zero, so then this will bring this curve up to zero, and the other thing you can do is you can multiply the whole, so this is nominally between zero and one, but you can multiply the whole lot by say a factor of five, or something like that, and what this will do is make, see, see here, here the error function has gone up a bit, this will make this particular experimental data set more important than the others. Um, so, so you can effectively play with the options here and um, sort of play, 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 with, play with the fit. Um, there's, there's lots of different options here, like you can do it on log scales, you can invert the axes and sort of all, all exciting things like that. Now, um, okay, so that's interesting, but that doesn't really answer the question that I, I got uh, given, so I'm going to come on to that in a minute. So also here there's this configure button that you can click on. Um, and this effectively configures the... So in fact what we're, just, what we're going to do is we're just going to run this now just to prove it works. Okay, so just, I'm just going to run a fit. So it's running. And you'll, you'll see this curve change here. I almost fit it perfectly in one go, which is actually quite impressive. I think it'll improve it slightly in the next iteration. There we go. And you can see this this green is the error function, which is effectively one curve subtracted from the other. I think I'll just stop it in a minute. Yeah, so basically that's fit the data perfectly, which is quite quite nice. So um, we're now going to click at the uh, configure window. So <clears throat> and figure look at what's going on. So these options here in the configure minimizer, I wouldn't I wouldn't touch, just leave them alone. Um, I, I might make another video on those later, but there's things like what type of algorithm you want to use to fit. So do you want to use a downhill simplex or Newton's method? I'd, I'll just leave these on the default. Then you've got the fit variable window that I want to talk about. So, now, um, the first thing we need to know about this before I, before I talk is how the model stores data. So, if we go to file and then script editor, this is this exposes effectively how the model actually works. So if you click on um, uh, Data Explorer, it will bring no. That actually, that's not what I'm going to do. Firstly, if you click on View Raw JSON, so click on View Raw Data JSON, this will. Um, it's just going to bring it up. I hope. Is it going to bring it up or it's going to crash? It's going to crash. Oh no! It brought it up. Excellent. Um, so if you, it's a bit sluggish, I don't like to say sluggish, oh that's not very helpful is it, let's get rid of that, that looks super complicated, let me just, 
edit something. And reload it. It compacted it because of the fitting. There we go. So if you click on um, view all JSON, this is actually the configuration file of, of GPD, of, 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 the, of your simulation. So everything is in this configuration file. And it looks like a load of really complicated text that you can't possibly understand. So the trick is to open this in Firefox. So I'm just going to reopen this in Firefox. So, one moment. So this is the window we're actually uh, doing the simulation. So this is the, the sim.gpdm file. So if we open this, so it's just a zip file. We're going to open it with an archive manager. You can open it with Win, with WinZip. Um, you can. There's this file called json.im. So if we export that from the zip file and put it there and rename this um, json.json. So json is a special file format um, that's used on the web. And then we're going to open this. Um, in Firefox. So I just double clicked on this in Firefox and I go collapse all. This is basically that file that we just looked at, so that really complicated file, um, which is, where is it? He, uh, JSON or data here. So this, this file, but just displayed in a nice format. Um, now, basically, every Every type, everything in, in the, the a whole device is described in this file. So, for example, if you look at the epitaxy, you can see the epitaxy it's got, which basically means the layer structure, you've got layers 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, and it's got contacts. So, for example, if we look at the layer editor, you can see it's got 0, 1, 2, 3 layers, so 0, 1, 2, 3 layers. So, if we look at, say, the 0, 1, second layer, look at the second layer, and let's look at, say, the optical material, you see it says, blends P to PTVM, which is that one there. And then if we look at, for example, <coughs> the density of states, which is associated with that, so we can look at um, the shape of the density of states here. Um, you can say, I don't know, so let's look at the mobility. So that the, the uh, Y mobility is this value here. So if we open this up in the electrical in the electrical editor, we can see the Y mobility is actually the same there. So all the, what I'm saying is all the parameters are basically stored in this JSON file as raw text, which is good. So what, again, why is he telling this? Well, if we go back to fit the fits to experimental data um, thing, and we go back to the configure uh, uh, thing, we can see, so imagine we want to change the Y mobility. Okay, so we're going to click here, we're going to say, right, what we're interested in changing is the this Y mobility. So we're going to go click on this, we're going to go epitaxy, p 3 to PCVM, um, drift diffusion parameters, the mobility in the y direction, which is it's a one D device, so that's going to be y, and it sets this parameter as epitaxy p three 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 drift diffusion electromobility y. So that's effectively setting the mobility of this layer. Now, if we expand uh, this here, you can see this is the actual JSON path. So if we were to open up, so I'll just get that back up again. If we were to open up. Um, the the um, the JSON file, and we go and we go to. So I'll try and do it here, and we go to epitaxy. Say, where is it? Epitaxy, layer two, uh, and then shape dos, which is the density of states. Where is it? Shape dos, and then we go to mu e. That's the value it's changing. So, although you're presented with this sort of nice path here in English. It actually is translating it to sort of something that's more related to the file. So you just need to be aware of that when you're sort of using this because sometimes um, this sort of pops its head up. And you see, for example, actually here, um, this, this file is actually derived from a different material system. So you see, it's, here we've actually used the material PM6Y6, um, but it doesn't really matter um, because this this JSON path is still going back to layer two. So just to be aware of. Now, other things about this fit variable window is, um, for example, here's the whole mobility. We can turn on or off fitting of that parameter by toggling it like that. This is the minimum value um, that the, the uh, 
parameters allowed to have, and this is the maximum value this parameter is allowed to have. If you get these wrong, it's not it's going to really mess up the fit. This is the error function. So if the fit strays out outside of these parameters, then so I'll just get this back. So I'll just get this back. Then what happens is we have another error function here. We'll call it f. Um, I don't know params or something. Parameter that's for parameters. So if if this value strays outside between this range, you get the value of 100 here added into this fit function here. So this, this goes up by 100. So, and what the, the idea of this is, so typically this, this error function would be in the range of about, I don't know, say 0 0.1 to 1. And the point of adding 100 to it, if, if you go out of side of this range, is it just scares the fit algorithm into avoiding being outside this range. So it suddenly gets a value of 100, it goes, oh, I don't want to be there, and it shrinks back into where it should be. Um, and you can vary these parameters on a log scale or a linear scale. I've not really found it's very useful. Okay. Other things. So um, let's look at fit rules. So fit rules. Um, imagine uh, we want to force, along the same lines, we want to force um, a value of, say, the electron mobility to be higher than the whole mobility. What we could do is we could set here the um, x parameter. So, and here we've got a little mathematical equation. So here we're going to say x is um, epitaxy, Peter to PCM, um, drift diffusion. We're going to choose the electron mobility again. And hit y we're going to set as the whole mobility, epitaxy, Peter to PCM, drift diffusion, whole mobility. And here we've got, we've got a mathematical expression. Now, this again, this expression is added to this function here. So I'm just going to actually, um, hmm. I'm going to write it out again. Okay, so I'm going to make a new page. Uh, so let's make a new page. Let's re rewrite this. So we've got our total error function is equal to, we'll call this, um, we'll sum this 0 to n, and we'll call this over, overall experimental theta. So imagine we've got a function here. Um, no, actually, that's, quite, that's not very clear, is it? So, Imagine we're, doing, we've got this, we're fitting a dark JV curve and we're fitting a light JV curve. We've got our previous F here for F params. And also to this, we're going to add this fit rules, this error that's coming from our fit rules. Oh, I'll call it rules. Handwrite it poorly, I'm sorry. Um, so this is effectively another error function. Now, when this is true, so when x is bigger than y, so when the electron mobility is bigger than whole mobility, it's going to produce an error, which is, um, so this is effectively a mathematical error. So if we evaluate this, let me get this. So we've got x is bigger than y. So if x is bigger than y, if that's true, that's equal to 1 because it's, it's true. So what we can do, for example, is we can say, right, if x is bigger than y, um, I want to add a value of 100. So we multiply that by 100. And then basically, as soon as x is bigger than y, it's going to say, well, add an error, error function 100 to the fitting, which will hopefully scare the fitting algorithm away from that parameter. Or you can do other clever things. So this will accept um, mathematical expressions. So you can go x is bigger than y times, say, 0.2. And what this means is you'll get an error function added of 100 when the electron mobility is bigger than twice the whole mobility. Okay, so that's that. And again, here, here's these JSON, if we expand this, here's these JSON paths um, into, the, into our configuration file. Um, right, so duplicate window. So this is quite cool, so I'll turn all these off. Now, imagine we are fitting a, um, a device that we want to be symmetric. So we've got electron mo whole mobility, so, sorry, so we want to fit the electron mobility, the electron tail slope, and the electron trap density, and oops, so what's going on there? And we want the electron mobility to be the same as the whole mobility, and the electron tail slope to be the whole same as the whole tail slope. So we're effectively having a symmetric device. What we can do is every time we change the whole the sorry the electron mobility, we can get using this window, we can make the um, uh, the simulation copy this value. To, sorry, this value to the whole mobility. So effectively, every time we change electron mobility, 
it sets the whole mobility equal to it. So it's not fitting the whole mobility, it's just like copying the value, the value of the electron mobility to the whole mobility. So you're fitting a symmetric device. So all you need to do is click this on, and then it will copy the source, which is the electron mobility, to the destination, um, which is the whole mobility. And again, here we've got our JSON paths here. So I'll just expand this a bit. So these are all the JSON paths. And again, we've got this little function. So for example, if rather than just copying it, you wanted to also copy but multiply the electron mobility by two, then you can do that as well. Um, so that's really this. And what I'd also say is, um, which I guess prompted this, this, um, this little uh, uh, chat, is that if you, for example, have here just a random line with that makes no sense, it's going to complain quite a lot. Um, you'll get errors because obviously it doesn't know what to do with, with this. So make sure that the, all these are sane, basically. Make sure also these min-max values are sane. Um, and make sure you only turn on the fitting parameters you want to turn on. Um, so, you know, if you know, if you know what the shunt resistance is, don't fit the shunt resistance because it's just wasting iterations. Um, and the quicker and less parameters you can fit, the better you are. So usually I start off with fitting symmetric fits. So that's it really. Um, I hope that was useful. It's sort of a deep dive into the, into fitting um, and stuff like that. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching and um, yeah, have a nice Easter I guess. <laughs>